The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in the gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of humanity. The field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The son of humanity will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let everyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. God of all grace and tender, fierce mercy, I speak in your name and in your presence, asking that my words would be pleasing to you, guided by your Spirit, and that the hearts and minds of your people would be open to you. Through Christ our Lord, I pray. Amen. Amen. So this morning we have the parable of the weeds. It comes from the middle of what's known as the parable's discourse in Matthew's Gospel. You've heard us say there's five major discourses in Matthew's Gospel. The most familiar is the Sermon on the Mount. And most scholars think that these discourses are actually collections of Jesus' teachings. So. The parables discourse has eight parables, and by the way, um, I love parables. I I love them, I love them, I love them, because they drive me crazy. (laughs) And um, uh, I'll say a little more about this later, but a parable is designed to shock us and surprise us and get our attention in a different way. And so I like it, and I like it that even when Jesus explains the parable, there are so many questions left unanswered. And that's just the nature of parables. They're enigmatic sayings, they're riddles, they're wisdom sayings, they are, um, uh, well, hang on just one second, Uh, proverbs, proverbs, riddles, enigmatic sayings, wisdom sayings. So, 
We have eight of them in one chapter. The whole chapter is basically eight parables. Now I'm going to give you a quiz. Don't you love it? Um, I'm going to give you a test, and you t I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand except at the end. And, um, but remember something. You all remember Mr. Miyagi in, uh, in uh, the Karate Kid movie? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So many great sayings of Mr. Miyagi. One of them is... No bad student, Danielson, only bad teacher. So if you do poorly on the quiz, that's a reflection on me, not on you. All right, are you ready? So of the eight parables, I want you to imagine how many, I remember how many of them you actually know. The first parable is the parable of the sower. The second one is the parable of the weeds, which we have this morning. Third is parable of the mustard seed, then the parable of leaven, then the parable of the treasure hidden in the field, the pearl of great price, the dragnet, and finally treasures new and old. Did anybody get a hundred percent? Yes, a, a few. All right, I love it. Robert, we have less work to do than I thought. Some of them got it. All right, it's good. It's good. So, The parable of the sower is the first parable. And I, along with many others, think of the parable of the, of the sower, which we had in last week's text, as a, as a parable about parables. And if you remember, it's about parable, a parable about four kinds of soil. Hard pan soil, rocky soil, soil with, with thorns or weeds that choke the seed, and then the good soil. And this is part of what makes parables um, challenging, is if you're the hard pan soil, can you become the good soil? If you're the rocky soil, can you become the good soil? If you're the rocky soil, could you become the thorny soil? I mean, I mean how do you change? So let's go to our parable, the parable of the weeds. There's only two, two, two things in it. You're either a weed or you're the wheat. Does wheat become weed? Does, no, it doesn't, doesn't. Does weed become wheat? So how does it work? I mean, what's the point? And I understand the parable of the sower to, to be about recognizing that in my heart are all kinds of soil. All the kinds of soil are in me. It's more difficult to think that way about the parable of the weeds because you're either a child of the kingdom or a child of the devil. Um, help me, Jesus. You with me? And so it, 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 it begs the question. Now I'm going to come back to the parable of the weeds a little bit later. Also, within this chapter of eight parables are two statements about parables. And the first one it's after the parable of the sower, before Jesus explains it, the disciples ask him, why do you speak to them in parables? And Jesus says, because in seeing they see and do not see. Now, that's just, we could have a whole week of sermons on that. You've often heard me say, we live life playing out our own home movie. You remember me saying that? All of life, everything I look at, I look at it through, through the way my, the, my frame work. And so I speak to them in parables because they see, and in seeing, they don't see. And they hear, and in hearing, they don't hear. And so I speak to them in parables, in enigmatic sayings, to try to get their attention. Because... In seeing and not seeing, and in hearing and not he hearing, they don't turn so that I might heal them. And so, I mean, part of me says, okay, you're trying to get their attention, but you're making it more difficult with this enigmatic saying. Then later in the parable's discourse, Jesus says, I utter things hidden from the foundation of the world. 
And that's a, that's a prophecy from Isaiah. I utter things hidden from the foundation of the world. Now, it's worth just pausing with that for just a moment. He's come to expose, I'm going to come back to that word, to expose things hidden from the foundation of the world. That is, I've come to expose things God's people have never heard before. And I, now, the word expose, he doesn't say, I came to reveal them, I came to expose them. Again, these parables, these enigmatic sayings expose things hidden from the foundation of the world, but they don't exactly explain them. Why? And by the way, when the disciples say to Jesus, why do you speak to them in parables? And then Jesus answers and says, to them it has not been given to understand, but to you it has been given to understand. Why? Why would Jesus explain to some and not to others? And then he goes and explains to them the parable of the sower, and they sort of get it, but they don't really. Jesus' explanation is never enough. But why? Now, I want you to hear this. This, is, this becomes one of the major points of the parables chapter. Why would Jesus explain to you and not to the ones outside? Why? Matthew never answers that question. It's one of the things that you walk away from and go, it's an unanswered question. Jesus, what's up? Matthew never answers the question. In fact, Matthew indicates he doesn't care about that question. He's after something else. He's after something else. So now look in the middle of your gospel text for this morning. The beginning of the second paragraph. Then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds. And he begins to explain it. So again, those that are outside don't get Jesus' explanation. The ones that enter the house with him get Jesus' explanation. What's up with that? Thank you. <laughs> I love it. I think what Matthew is after is he wants all of his readers to say, I want to be in the house. I want to be in the group that Jesus is explaining it to. I don't understand. I want to understand. I don't get it. I want to get it. And I'm going to press in until I'm the one that Jesus is explaining it. It's all about me. It's all about you. Matthew wants this to hone in directly on every reader to say, I want to draw near to Jesus and get the explanation. Jesus wants, Matthew wants every reader to say, what's the soil in my heart? Draw near to Jesus and get help with that. G Matthew wants every reader to say, by the way, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, just a moment, I'm going to talk about judgment. Matthew wants every reader to be scared. Judgment is coming. Am I the wheat or am I the weed? And I want to draw near to Jesus so I can know and I can know what it means to be the wheat and how to be the wheat and not be a weed. Because, and this is, you know, none of us like this. Is there a judgment? Is judgment coming? Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Does judgment come every day in your life pretty much? <laughs> Does it, doesn't all of life have judgment? We don't like to think of it as damnation and hellfire and all of that. And Jesus 
references it many times. The parable of the dragnet in our chapter will be similar to this parable about being cast into the fiery furnace. Why? Why? Again, let me ask you something. How are you doing with your fears? You doing all right? Good. Thanks, Jen. Good. Good for you. Uh, you notice I didn't ask you, do you have them? I asked you, how are you doing with them? All human beings have fear. And so what Jesus is doing is, is helping us locate the, do the right thing with our fear, which is to fear God. Let your fear take you to the fear of God. And the proverb, the book of Proverbs, and over and over in the Old Testament, it says, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Jesus, Matthew, they're not answering the question of this whole issue we have about judgment and all of that. They're trying to get the attention, Jesus, of every hearer and Matthew of every reader. Fear God. Fear God. It's the beginning of wisdom. And then, and then, draw near to Jesus, the one who draws near to you. The God who has come to be with us. The God who has come to forgive us. The God who has come to die on the cross for us. The God who has come to say, I'm here to be with you. I'm here to be for you. And realize that's the one who is the judge of the world. The judge of me and the judge of the world. Enter that relationship. And so, in the early section of, of, the, of the parable's discourse, when the disciples come to Jesus and say, why do you speak to them in parables? And Jesus says, to you it has been given to understand those that draw near. That's what Matthew and Jesus both want. In this text we have this morning, when Jesus pulls away, go, goes away from the crowd and pulls his disciples into the house and draws them near, that's then that's where we begin to meet Jesus who loves me. And interestingly for Matthew, it's never Matthew's story that answers the questions. Matthew's story directs us to Jesus who answers the questions. Matthew's story doesn't answer the questions. Matthew's story directs us to Jesus who answers the questions, and he answers by entering into relationship with us. And in that relationship, we have the chance to discover the other great piece of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Perfect love casts out all fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. If you are afraid, it means you are not perfected in love, the letter of John says. And so what, Matthew, what Jesus is after and what Matthew wants for every reader is not some theory and not some theology or not some philosophy, but Jesus, turn to Him. Turn to Him. And meet the God who is for you. And all the parables, no, no, they're all different, but the, but the message of the parables discourse, this is the emphasis. Are you there with me? Are we good? Yep. Okay, because now there's a new chapter, short chapter. Okay? So, our story is all the Jesus story. Matthew's story is all the Jesus story. Yes. And, and, not but, and, drawing near to Jesus, he can lead us to the God who is known by many names. Jesus can lead us to the God who is the ultimate mystery and can be known by many names. 
there's inklings of this throughout the New Testament. In one of Paul's letters, he writes, Our God is the Father from whom every family on earth derives its name. Not just our family, but every family on earth derives its name. And the Scriptures indicate that God is at work in other peoples and other traditions and other religions. I've preached that before. I'm not going to go into detail now. I just want to say it now, this morning. And so, for some, for some, progress means turning towards the divine, they might say. Turning toward the ultimate mystery. And the heart of the teaching is to be in relationship with this God. Come to know this God who is for you, who created you and sustained you and loves you and nurtures you, and who is for you. Turn toward this God and be perfected in love. In the end, love answers all the commandments. Love is the greatest of virtues. Love is the Jesus way as presiding Bishop Michael Curry tells us, Jesus' way is the way of love. And in that, we become perfected in the relationship. We become perfected in love. Amen.